my name is Chu Fong Rong. I'm here to introduce uh, Dr. Zhang. Uh, he's going to um, talk about the approach to alcohol intervention on drinking behavior. Dr. Zhang is an associate professor on uh, communication and journalism from UB Eau Claire, which is happened to be my school that I graduated from back in 1995. So, welcome, Dr. Zhang. <laughs> My name is Yao Wang, yeah, just call me Wang, yeah, after my presentation. And sometimes it's a really hard to pronounce my name, Yao Wang Yong Chang. But just yeah, call me Wang. Yeah, when you count here, yeah, one, two, three, that is yeah, exactly my name, Yao yeah, Wang. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm from, yeah, originally from yeah, South Korea, you know, about yeah, 20 years ago. And then I, I've got your yeah, PhD and then your yeah, teaching at UW Korea since 2003. I'm teaching uh, advertising, uh, international communication, as well as uh, mass media law. And then my research includes uh, global communication, press communication, uh, mostly targeted uh, in the Asian American group in the US. So that's why I'm trying to uh, make a presentation for today uh, regarding the effects of your uh, media or advertising on your uh, drinking issues among college students uh, between your uh, population and your uh, among uh, population you know, for today. Okay, so Okay, yeah, binge drinking is yeah, one of your biggest issues anyway. I don't know you know whether or not yeah, how many drinks you got yeah, yesterday. So you know what about you guys? <laughs> how many drinks did you get yeah, yesterday? Let's yeah, Friday. Thank you. Two I am old, so I don't have more like no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one. One. Anyone just drinks yeah, more than yeah, five? No. So anyway, yeah, that, that is to be uh, one of the issues I'm just trying to make a presentation you know, for today. Okay, okay yeah, I, I'm going to try to make uh, two presentations you know, for today. Yeah, this is the first part of your presentation. Then you're trying to yeah, move to the next presentation you know, as well. Now, this is the title of your first your presentation. So effect of one continuous relationship between your yeah, appreciation of messages, advertising and media use, and your yeah, drinking. As I mentioned, yeah, drinking is yeah, one of the biggest issues so far. Yeah, binge drinking, yeah, excessive drinking is one of the biggest problems. Yeah, mostly from yeah, young audiences. You know, whether or not they are Caucasian or African American or Hispanic, as well as East or South yeah, Asian groups. Researchers are really interested in yeah, how to address yeah, this problem or how to solve yeah, the drinking issues, yeah, mostly from yeah, Caucasian or Asian or in African American group, or Hispanic group, or sometimes yeah, East Asian group as well. But little research yeah, has been paid to yeah, South so many, you know, some South yeah, so many the Asian yeah, groups yeah, so far. So that's why I'm really interested in yeah, so many health communication relate you to yeah, so many Asian yeah, American group yeah, so specifically among population. Okay. I'm still you know some I'm still I have to still learn about the yeah, Hmong population, Hmong cultures. I cannot yeah, completely understand the yeah, so many Hmong cultures as well as US cultures as well. So I'm still stick with yeah, so my own cultures yeah, from South Korea. They just try to yes to figure out yeah, how to integrate yes, my own cultures with their youth cultures. So that's why I'm just trying to learn about yeah, some your own cultures you know, some so far. So I have yeah, two kids, yeah, one of them is a college student. Yeah, they are not the same as me. Yeah, they have yeah, some different yeah, cultural yeah, expectations or background or some different types of yeah, expectations so far. So that's why. I need to learn about your home culture, then I'm just trying to only focus on the effect of advertising or media use on your drinking issues you know, between yes, many ethnic, some ethnic groups. Okay, so this is about your proposed study. As you can see, so what is the impact of your media use and advertising, media use and advertising on drinking? 
or intention to drink as well as actual drinking among colleagues. I'm just trying to yeah, compare yes, Moria 2 group, yeah, Caucasian group versus yes, Hmong population yeah, from your yeah, UW group. I just use only yeah, one yeah, sample, yeah, one yeah, group yeah, sample yeah, for my research. Okay, as you can see, the impact of advertising or media use on drinking yeah, can be moderated by their own yeah, cultural background, yes, yeah, Hmong culture as well as uh, mediate by yeah, some of the drinking expectancies that we're trying to move on the significance of the study. This is very important. Uh, it means that I already asked you guys about uh, how many drinks you guys yeah, yesterday. Maybe I can ask the same question to your Caucasian students. Maybe they will, I'm not sure yet, that they will drink more yeah, compared to yeah, you guys. So it means that so there are different types of yeah, media use, there are different yeah, levels of advertising, yeah, exposure or attention, or different levels of drinking or intention drink. So that's why we have to create more customized, more targeted advertising campaign or health campaign targeted yeah, very specific audience. You know, for example, yeah, among population or Caucasian group as well. So that's why I'm trying to explain about yeah, so many, why we need to create a customized yeah, advertising campaign or health campaign targeted very specific audience. Okay, I'm just trying to briefly explain about yeah, some several yeah, theories yeah, based on yeah, my research. Okay. So here's the number one. Okay, so what is the impact, impact of advertising on drinking? What do you think about the impact of advertising on your drinking? So when you guys are watching so many TV, when you exposed to any advertising campaign, right? And then it does really directly or indirectly increase yeah, any consumption of your peers or any specific type of your product. So what do you think about the yeah, impact of advertising so far? What, what, what do we think about the impacts of yeah. advertising? I think yeah. it influences a lot on our behaviors, mm -hmm. um, socializing, coping mechanism. Yeah, so you are technically uh, over 21, right? Well, I'm not sure about whether or not yeah, you guys are over 21. Thank you for that. And I think that, that's true, especially for, I think, introducing alcohol to young individuals. I mean, you look at the Super Bowl, which is, you know, the mm -hmm. biggest media event in America and there's the expected Budweiser commercial or Miller Lite commercial and you have millions of children like watching the show and, um, and, and you know how does that affect their understanding of, of what alcohol consumption is? Right, so that's why, that's why I'm trying to explain about yes, the comparable theology for one yeah, media cultivation theory. So I know yeah, there are some yeah, big steel yeah, research yeah, the impact of advertising. Yeah, someone said that the advertising will greatly influence on yeah, some drinking or cognitive yeah, development yeah, regarding yeah, positive expectancies about yeah, drinking issues. But the other said that yeah, there's only link yeah, between advertising or media use and actual consumption of yeah, some drinking. But you know, so based on your yeah, media cultivation theory, advertising messages, yeah, so generally speaking, will shape any cultural meaning of drinking. So it means that, oh yeah, you know, you know, when you guys are watching me Super Bowl, yeah, he already mentioned that. What do you guys do? You maybe just grab your six packs of beers and then just order your chickens or pizzas, right? And then just yeah, eat and watch yeah, some Super Bowl games. Why? This is kind of yeah, media impact or advertising impact, right? So that is yeah, one of the important theory regarding the impact of advertising and media use. I'm wondering if you guys, uh, if you guys need uh, more time for taking note, then it would be fine. But maybe presentation would be available online so that you can access. Am I right? Or, uh, uh, I can ask and let you guys know at the end if the presentation can be available to you guys. If you guys do want to really get the presentation. Okay, yeah. okay that would be a great. You know, I, I'm going to just yes, I'm gonna send you guys a copy of my PowerPoint presentation, right? Yeah, for your reference, if you need. But I'm just trying to yeah, move yes, a little bit fast. Yes, I'm going to slide by slide. Yes, okay. 
And here just a minute second theory. The drinking is kind of a learned behavior. So it means that, as you already mentioned, that you know, watch the Super Bowl, okay? And then you just have drink some beers, right? And then it's really great fun and excited, right? And then it's kind of as many out of your some hectic life, you know, when you drink, right? And then you continuously drink, you have so many beers, some you have some other products, you when you watch some sporting event or when you hang out you know, with some of your friends as well. So that's why, that's why advertising or media use or media exposure definitely increase your positive or negative your positive expectancies that finally affect on your drinking as well. Okay, acculturation theory. This is the last theory I'm going to explain yeah, you know, for today. So you guys are definitely familiar with the acculturation theory. The let's be healthier experts just identify the two types of acculturation theory. So number one, unidimensional model. Number two, the bidimensional model. The unidimensional model means that this is kind of just a linear yes, the development from your yeah, you know, own of acculturated, yeah, to yeah, totally culturated as well. Yeah, this is about the unidimensional process. As you can see, so it, it assumes that acculturation is yes, you know, developed from, you know, from yeah, just, yes, I mean, not acculturated to completely acculturated. So you mean that as individuals acculturated into a new one, cultures, you know, for example, yeah, youth cultures, they might yeah, lose the influence of old culture or home culture on their life. That is kind of one of your theory of acculturation theory. So here's the number two. Another healthy expert argue that does mean the unidimensional does not work well. So that's why he also argued for the yeah, bidimensional model. This kind of yeah, cultural integration or biculturalism. So it means that you got to still keep yeah, your own cultural background, right? And then when you contact as many different cultures in the US, and then just try to add what well, you so many combine or integrate yeah, some new cultures into your own cultures, right? So yeah, there are two yeah, different types of acculturation process. So it depends on yeah, your generation. So maybe, yeah, based on my understanding, yeah, your mom and dad would be a first generation. You would be a yeah, 1.5 or second generation. And also you would be a yeah, first yeah, current student yeah, from yeah, your family members as well. Right? And also maybe yeah, your son and daughters, about yeah, so many 10 years or 20 years later, right? So they are completely different yeah, from you guys, right? So yeah, depends on your generation. Yeah, we have yeah, some different expectation about yeah, some drinking issues. Okay, yeah, first generation, yeah, your mom and dad. Yeah, still yeah, stick with yeah, your own yeah, cultural background. Yeah, they will change, but they will not yeah, some change the yeah, facts. But what about you guys? Yeah, it depends on yeah, so many 18 to yeah, 21, yeah, over yeah, 21. But yeah, so generally speaking, right? So when you are born in the yeah, US and then your values, why well, your cultural background will be changing your yeah, facts. So that's why, based on your current study, young monks' yeah, drinking rate yeah, conform to those of United States population. Okay? So you know, so based on my own research, still, Caucasian group yeah, drinks more than just yeah, the monk population. But for over 21, for over 21, like him, right? <laughs> it doesn't make any significant differences yeah, between your yeah, monk population versus your yeah, Caucasian girl. Okay? But you know, under 21, yeah, still the yeah, Caucasian girl is more likely to drink yeah, compared to your yeah, monk population. So that's why I'm just trying to just yes, test your model of your yeah, impact of advertising impact of advertising and media use, right, on yeah, so many intention to drink yeah, between 18 to 21, and then drinking over 21, right? And then mediated by positive expectancies of cardiac cognitive development 
and then moderate by your monk cultures. Okay, so this is your bark, your samai, your mother. Now based on this model, I just tested your four hypotheses. Okay, you can see, what about the impact of your media, media use of your positive alcohol expectancy? That is your body hypothesis one. <coughs> hypothesis two, what about the impact of the independent variable as well as your positive expectancy as your mediators are related to any one cultures or any specific ethnic background? Hypothesis, hypothesis three, any differences yeah, regarding intention to drink and your yeah, actual drinking among your yeah, colleagues, your yeah, Caucasian versus your yeah, monk population. Number four, yeah, last hypothesis, the way you are not positive, alcohol expectancies can mediate impact of advertising and media use on your drinking and intention to drink. So I, I just tested yeah, only four hypotheses. Okay, about your 400, yeah, some university college students, right? And here are some samples. I'm still yeah, collecting yeah, more samples. You know, I, I talked to yeah, so many, so before we have about 234 yeah, monks students. I still collect yeah, more monks students, yeah, some data. But yeah, so far, yeah, based on the yeah, data I've collected, I just yeah, tested yeah, four hypotheses. <coughs> Are you just survey, right? And then survey or administered in class as well as online. Okay? Yeah, here are some control group, the Caucasian versus the monk population. Here are independent variable media use advertising and exposure and attention. And first, your dependent variable or mediators, as well as your two your dependent variables, depending on their ages. Yes, and for example, underage drinking, as well as over your 21, your young adults are drinking. Okay, so this is a result of my first yeah, research. And as you can see, the only yeah, difference, only the one population, the huge yeah, the media compared to your yeah, Caucasian group, but except for your yeah, media huge yeah, variable, the yeah, Caucasian group, the yeah, white population, the yeah, drink more, intention to drink, and then just try to develop more positive expectancies, and then advertising use, and so on. So it means that, you know, so based on Descriptive yeah, statistics, so in you know, a Caucasian group which are willing to yeah, some drink or actually consume yeah, drink yeah, compared to their yeah, bone population. So that's why that's why we have to know about how to create yeah, different types of health campaigns yeah, targeting yeah, different ethnic groups. Okay, result for your hypothesis one. As I mentioned to you, this is your first hypothesis. And as you can see, Caucasian minus one. What about the impact of your media use on your positive expectancy? And as you can see, the mean differences yeah, for relationship and excitement is a big yeah, for yeah, so many Caucasian group. So it means that yeah, for Caucasian group, yeah, they are going, you know, they are going to develop more positive expectancy, more positive attitude when they are exposed to media or TV or certain types of yeah, so many the purchasing yeah, some program. Number two, you know, whether or not the impact of independent variable and advertising and media use and positive expectancy will depend on yeah, some ethnicity, yeah, based on yeah, some MANOVA or kind of SPSS test, this ethnicity exposure or attention will depend on, will depend on ethnicity. So it means that the different types of advertising exposure, different types of interpretation of advertising, or different types of media use yeah, between the yeah, Caucasian and the yeah, Hmong population. Yeah, number three, so what about your yeah, intention to drink? As I mentioned to you, it doesn't make any significant differences between your yeah, Hmong population and Caucasian group over 21 regarding drinking. Yeah, still, as I mentioned to you, Caucasian group is going to drink more compared to your yeah, Hmong population, but not significantly, not statistically 
significant gap between their two ethnic groups regarding drinking. But yeah, for intention to drink, yes, the Caucasian group is definitely more likely to drink when they become yeah, over yeah, 21 years old. So that is just some differences yeah, between yes, the Caucasian and non population. So anyway, so this is the last one. What about the impact of your positive expectancy or any positive attitude regarding the alcohol use? You know, based on that many by other analysis, yes, it can be marginally, yeah, you know, so many of the hypothesis for immediate positive attitude will mediate the impact of advertising on the yes, many drinking. Okay, so that's why ethnic background is really important. You know, for yeah, figuring out yeah, so many the positive expectancies or intention to drink or and yeah, actual drinking as well. Why? That's why. You know, as you can see, drinking alcohol would lead to more excitement. They make a yeah, for better relationship yeah, among people, yeah, both the yeah, Caucasian yeah, population, right? Not yeah, compared to the yeah, bone population. And then Caucasian respondent has a significantly higher level of alcohol consumption and intention to drink then yeah, more misconduct. But as I mentioned to you, it's not yeah, significantly different yeah, from yeah, among and yeah, Caucasian group regarding drinking. So that's why. So we need to know about yes, I mean, any motivations that drive yeah, pins drinking or any drinking or intention to drink yeah, among college students. As I mentioned to you, any media use, right? Or any advertising or positive attitude are uh, one of the important motivation you know, for creating a binge drinking, or cardiac drinking, or intense drink as well. So number two, so in a monk population or Caucasian group, there's some huge yes, many media white world having differently, or different level of your intention to drink, as well as drinking so far. So that's why we develop create yeah, different types of health campaigns for targeting specific audiences. Okay, yeah, this is yeah, part two. Okay, based on my research, the you know, first year research, I just figured it out, the impact of the advertising on yeah, some drinking, which mediate by a positive expectancy. Okay, this is your second research. How to, how to reduce the impact of advertising on drinking through yeah, interpersonal communication. That is the second the part of your research project. Okay, and as you can see, what about the impact of advertising and media use? I already as you mentioned to advertising or media use has just some yeah, effect on your drinking so far, which are generally mediated by your positive expectancy, right? And then for the, this, this study, what about the impact of advertising on your drinking? Mediated by interpersonal communication as well as your positive expectancy. As you mentioned to you, based on your first research, advertising and media use has some in impact. Number two, positive expectancies can mediate impact of advertising on drinking. So that's why how to reduce the impact of advertising or media use on drinking through interpersonal communication. So that is a second a important a part of the study. Okay, here is your theory. I still use just some media cultivation theory, social learning theory, and acculturation theory as well. Then I just added one more is some theory, you know, for explaining the impact of interpersonal communication. Now this is one of the important theory, right? You know, as you can see, media is one of the important source for setting the agenda for talking. As you already mentioned that the Super Bowl commercials, when you watch some Super Bowl commercials, any peer commercials, yeah, there are a lot of great yeah, commercials you guys can see. And then talk about it, right? Talk about any specific yeah, peer commercials. I like it, I don't like it, it's great, yeah, too fun to watch, right? And then finally just try to develop yeah, your own opinion through your interpersonal communication. And then make your decision. Oh yeah, this is yeah, great, yeah, too fun and exact, and then yeah, I'd better drink yeah, some beers, yeah, some product, and then some drinking. Or others say, yeah, this is not yeah, great to drink yeah, for some reason, and then maybe the bridges to drink anyway. 
So this is one of the important yeah, part of the theory. Anyway, interpersonal communication or talk plays a very important role in formation of public opinion. <웃음> Now, this is about interpersonal communication. There are two types of interpersonal communication. Number one is your kind of daily talk. So maybe you can just talk with your family members or your friends or your peers regarding any advertising or any media program or TV program or social media, right? So when you watch some TV program and then tweet to you know, somebody, someone through your Twitters or post messages on your know, social media as well. Uh, this is kind of a daily, daily talk, yeah, daily discussion with yeah, your family members or any, any connected members on social media as well as yeah, your friend. The deliberation. Deliberation is kind of some public opinion formation. So it means that based on your discussion with yeah, your network, your family members who are you know, so many friends or, and so on, you just try to develop your own opinion, right? So you can just express your own opinion, you can say, speak out yeah, when facing any contrary viewpoint and so on. Yeah, based on your two intervening variables, I just tested impact of advertising on drinking mediated by interpersonal discussion, yeah, daily discussion, and deliberation, yeah, speak out, or well, just try to get some, you know, form yeah, your own opinion regarding your drinking, and then finally, yeah, some many drinking issues. Yeah, this is about the second yeah, model I'm going to test. Okay, so this is, I'm just trying to test about your yeah, four hypotheses yeah, based on yeah, this model. You know, as you can see, so alcohol advertising exposure or alcohol advertising attention will lead to yes, many interpersonal discussion. So it means that yes, super advertising will increase yeah, more talk on yeah, advertising. <coughs> and then interpersonal discussion will mediate impact of advertising on deliberation. The deliberation will mediate impact of independent variable on positive expectancy. And then finally, the yes, positive expectancies will mediate impact of independent variable on drinking. I will try to test yeah, four hypotheses. Okay, I will just let PSS analysis as well as the ABOX 19.0, yeah, kind of a ML, yeah, kind of a structural equation modeling you know, for testing the yeah, relationship between yeah, you know, variables. Okay, so based on your yeah, independent yeah, sample yeah, t-test, now, as you can see, functions are not the same as the Caucasian group regarding advertising use as well as just me drinking you know, so far. So, you know, as you can see, among Americans have a lower level of drinking compared to the Caucasian group. Okay, so I just use some structural education modeling you are not familiar with, but yeah, based on my yes, structural education modeling, I just tested here yeah, whether or not it fits well yeah, based on yeah, this slide. It really fit well you know, for explaining relationship. Okay, this is about yes, the outcome. Okay, and as you can see, I just tested yeah, only yeah, four hypotheses yeah, based on, based on yeah, this model. Okay, so when someone uh, really attend to advertising messages, right, so they more likely to talk about interpersonal discussion about advertising messages, right? So in any exposed you know, attention to advertising will lead to more talk or conversation on advertising messages. Number two, the interpersonal discussion will mediate impact of advertising on your yeah, deliberation. The deliberation will mediate the impact of advertising interpersonal discussion on positive expectancies. But this is really important yeah, so far. As I mentioned to you, I'm really interested in how to reduce the impact of advertising when media use on your yeah, positive expectancies. Why? 
positive expectancies is what we import the factors to increase any drinking or binge drinking or excessive drinking. So that's why how to reduce the impact of advertising on your positive expectancies through interpersonal communication based on your structural education modeling. When they talk about uh, you know, advertising, yeah, so many messages with your family members or peers or you know, some others yeah, through yeah, so social media, right? And then they just try to develop their own opinion. They just form their own yeah, opinion regarding their yeah, drinking issues. And then it will reduce the impact of advertising on their positive expectations, as you can see, the minus, right? So it means that yes, deliberation or interpersonal discussion will mediate the yes, impact of advertising on positive expectancies negatively. So that's the one of the big uh, important uh, finding. And also what about the impact of alcohol advertising on the uh, drinking? You know, as you can see, advertising will directly influence on drinking, right? And also positive expectancies will be your yeah, mediated impact of alcohol advertising on drinking. So you know what I'm saying is that this is the way you know for students yeah, to process you know, any information when they are exposed to your yeah, advertising. So that's why we need to figure it out yeah, how to create health campaign messages right to use your interpersonal communication to reduce any binge drinking or excessive drinking as well. Okay, this is about your findings. So I just found your song, your relationship your between your advertising and interpersonal communication and deliberation on your drinking as well. And interpersonal discussion and deliberation are really important yeah, variables we need to yeah, think about yeah. as a possible or potential health communication, yeah, health yeah, campaign messages. So that's why these findings enable researchers, educators, and yeah, public policymakers to better understand. So number one, how young people process alcohol advertising messages. As I mentioned to you, advertising will directly impact on your yeah, drinking. Now that's the one of them, yeah, directly impact on advertising. Number two, the student can yeah, process advertising messages differently. Advertising exposure or attention first, right? And then talk about it and develop their own opinion. And then make a decision, you know, whether or not they will drink. That would be an indirect impact of advertising on drinking. So that's why we have to think about yeah, some two types of yeah, advertising, the yeah, message, yeah, process. So that's why when we create, yeah, when we create health campaign, when advertising, or anti-drinking, or anti binge drinking messages. So we have to include, yeah, we have to include, yeah, some, yeah, so many how to encourage, yes, yeah, so to talk about, yeah, so many alcohol or drinking issues with uh, their family members, or friends, or any some kind of place for speaking out their opinions, yeah, to some group members as well. So that is about, yeah, so many implications of advertising. Okay, yeah, sorry about your 40 minutes presentation. Mm -hmm. I have a question. What were the limitations of the study then? So, yeah, there are a lot of the limitations in IDF. You know, I'm still yeah, collecting some more data yeah, from your monk population. So, based on my data, set about yeah, 16 or 17 <coughs> percent are from your monk, about 80 something are from your yeah, three Caucasian. So, I still have to get yeah, more data from your monk population. But as you know, your monk population, your monk students are really limited your group of your students compared to Caucasian. You know, in Wisconsin about the, uh, I don't know, about the 50,000 in total. In Minnesota about the 70 or 80,000. In California more than the 100, right? So I still have to figure it out how to get your more data and then to test just on this model. That's one of the biggest just this, you know, limitation. And uh, you mentioned uh, roughly 18% eight, uh, of the of the uh, total sample were mom. I I guess uh, and then all of, all of that what eighteen twelve percent who who uh, who did you sample with? Was it mainly college students? 
or just like in bar within the month? Maybe? Okay, so you know, as you can see, you know, you know this is the only, uh, I just collect the only data from the UW Law Korea University of Wisconsin and Law Korea. So it means that so we cannot directly test the yeah, all yeah, population, all student population from Wisconsin or Minnesota and so on. So that's why I'm just trying to yeah, collect the data randomly, select from the yeah, UW of Korea yeah, among students, and then I'm just trying to yeah, calculate the uh, descriptive statistics, yeah, mean and standard deviation, and then just try to yeah, generalize my yeah, findings to explain the yeah, total population. So you know, that's why yeah, this is kind of some simple, yeah, random yeah, strategy. Yeah. I guess like my, uh, my, my concern with that is just, just because a lot of the Muslims who are attending university or colleges probably less likely to drink more versus say, say that if you, uh, if you were to go to a high school students where there's more, more, more population who, who probably grew up drinking. And so again, maybe this is my, my growing up too in the Hmong community where you know, a lot of the Hmong men and women tend to drink more. And so, I, I so your sample might have I know might have screw uh, a, little, a little bit. And so oh yeah, you definitely uh, so my sample it is not yeah you know, some not yeah, completely represent the characteristic of monster. I definitely agree with your your just your comment, right? So that's why we are still have to collect uh, more data, you know, from your monk population and so yeah. I'm curious to as to why you kind of focused on some culture and population there. Do you think an issue with primary drinking or anything like that? I'm just kind of curious. Oh, yeah, and so this is just a couple of reasons. First one, I'm from yeah, South Korea, so I'm definitely interested yeah. in yeah, the Asian, yeah, so many the group as well. Yeah, that's why yeah, in general, yeah, my background is yeah, first. And second, yeah, I'm working at the yeah, Center for Alcohol Studies at UW Korea. I'm a one year researcher. And the yeah, so Center for Alcohol Studies. And then yeah, at UW Korea, there are two yeah, big groups, yeah, Caucasian and Hmong population. Yeah, both are really important groups. So that's why, that's why I'm going to, I'm trying to see how to create yeah, some health campaign to target your yeah, Caucasian group versus your yeah, Hmong group differently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for actually conducting this research because it's very limited research on the Hmong young adults, Hmong in general, in any aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also curious to find out from the data that you collected, were there any qualitative information from either the Hmong or the Caucasian students of why that information was? Oh yeah, so I don't have any chance to yeah, collect any qualitative uh, some data yet. So, but you know, so this is uh, this is kind of what we are first step and I'm just trying to do. Then through my presentation, oh yeah, I still have to get yeah, more data anyway. I'm just getting more data anyway. So number two. I need to do yeah, some important research, you know, for example, as you guys are in you know, some, you know, some mom at the group, and then maybe I'm just trying to invite yeah, some, some of you guys yeah, for yeah, interview, some career kind of, yeah, focus group and so on. But that might be a good idea you know, for understanding so you guys, right, yeah, through my research. But this is kind of a limitation of your quantitative research. I just try to create yeah, some survey questionnaires. I just try to mark them, right? And I just try to use them you know, for analyzing data. It's definitely limited research. But this is just so far, you know, I don't know whether or not you guys have any chance to read about any journal articles or books regarding any monks to don't get drinking issues. It's really, really hard to find them. So I got really big problem you know, for finding uh, some research. So when I develop my own research, I have to read yeah, some some researchers' articles about yeah, Hmong drinking issue. Just only a few, just only a few. Some abstract. So it's really hard to find them. So that's why you know my research is the same a problem. I think it's a really good. Um, what were what kind of questions did you ask on your survey and what were the responses? And I was wondering specifically if you were oh, yeah, able to okay. find out so, um, yeah, yeah, how early they started. Yeah, I don't have time to yes, you know, show my yes, many questionnaires. Yeah. So this is just some example of yeah, how I yeah, ask yeah, some questions to your yes, students. Yeah, this is about exposure to your credible type, right? And then attention to yes, your credible type. And the positive expectancies, you know, for example, you know, so this is about raising more phone 
well, you know, when you, you know, when you hang around you know, with some your friends, right, it is uh, more great to have so many relax and then ex escape your know, hassles of everyday life, right? And this is your biodependence variable when you are old, you are too intense to drink beer and so on. Now, there are more questions that I did ask, but here are some yeah, sample questions I did ask. So definitely I agree with you, you know, some based on a yeah, few yeah, sample questions, you know, I cannot yeah, explore yeah, everything, right, related to your drinking issues. But yeah, this is kind of your first step to understand yeah, many monks, students, yeah, so many drinking issues, right? Well, not problems, but yeah, drinking issues. But you know, based on my research, I'm trying to get more data or understand your monk population in general. So you mean that maybe you guys already mentioned that, oh yeah, maybe I need to know about yeah, some, your high school life. Maybe high school students still drink a lot illegally, right? But you know, I have to understand them you know, first. Maybe I need to understand that your mom and dad is yes, a generation, right? So there are a lot of things I have to do. But, you know, this is really a linked research I have to go through. So you talked a lot about um, the cocaine versus you know, the alcohol. Um, so what about I did yeah, the test yeah, good point. I did the yeah, test, yeah, so many really, you know, any differences yeah, between yeah, you know, just, yeah, gender differences yeah, regarding the yeah, same drinking issues, yeah, male and female. But yeah, I have yeah, some data, I have the yeah, analysis, but my mom population, the data is really limited. The sample size is really, really small. So that's why when I just split up, yeah, male and female, it does not work. <laughs> right? So I did, I did yeah, use yeah, so many combined data for figuring out any differences yeah, between male and female. Okay? But I'm still collecting more data and then just try to figure it out, yeah, male and female, or yeah, so many, the green mom or not, but just try to do yeah, more research about that. But yeah, so far data is really yeah, to go off on that, I think that was more of an important issue that I saw with the research, was that 30% were male, 70% were female. Yeah. And mm -hmm. speaking from experience, I'm pretty sure most Hmong girls drink less than Hmong guys, because they're right. just drinking just with the guys. So that might be why some of you, that it might be a little bit skewed, why there's a very big difference between Caucasians and media effect versus the Hmong, because mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. I think about 64 were mm -hmm. Hmong, so that means about 40 of the, of the participants were females, and only 20% right. were males, and 20 were male. And Women, Hmong women mm. tend to graduate more than Hmong men. So then that shows that there's very big discrepancy between the two. So I think if there were like, if right. like all you need is more data, mm. and if I think it was also more male, mm. like Hmong male, your data would probably be very different. I think. Yeah, so, yeah. That's one of the binge strengths. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one of your big issues, you know, whether or not your sample data is your well represented, you have know, actual characteristics of your Hmong population. But yeah, so far, that is just some yeah, limited data I collected. And also, it's another yeah, big issue yeah, for collecting data directly from your own stuff. You know, for some reason, you know, not your Concordia University, you know, from your UW Korea, they, not, they are a little bit hesitating to respond to your survey question. Yeah, that's another big issue. But maybe, as me, you know, as me, depending on your know, gender, let's you say, know, why not? There's yeah, some very different level of your response rate. So what health initiatives were the state of drive then? I know you mentioned about advertising having a lot of influence in, in promoting health in the community. I'm just trying to think, as a health educator myself, um, I'm trying to think what can, I don't know, I'm trying to say what initiative do you can foresee that this Oh yeah, in the first of all, I'm definitely interested in your health communication and one of my research topic I'm really interested in. Yeah, how to create a yeah, more effective health campaign you know, for targeting the yeah, specific yeah, groups. Yeah, definitely, I'm, you know, that's why yeah, Caucasian and the yeah, Hmong population both are really important population and UW player. That's why I'm interested in yeah, both of them. So could it be linked to something with like liver cancer? Because knowing the API population, our enzymes and the talent almost really bad. 
um, and cancer which is huge. Yeah, so that's just some same issues. You know, you know what I'm saying that this is about the medical research, but I'm also interested in that cancer research as well. The immune is trying to extend my research interest into as we drinking, or smoking, or drug use, or so many other health issues that targeting the one population or disease and population in the So that's my future research anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah, compared to yeah, compared to yeah, Caucasian group, the advertising impact of advertising is less likely to increase and in intensity. Right? But you know, what I'm saying is that the pattern is yet changed. So you mean that so you guys are I don't know, so you guys are more conform to you guys just try your values or cultural background or uh, and others will be changed a lot, right? So that's why yeah, based on your yeah, limited yeah, data I yeah, use, right? You know, for over yeah, 21, right? The there's no any significant yeah, differences yeah, between your yeah, mom and your yeah, Caucasian group. So it means that there are same amount impact of advertising on drinking yeah, between your yeah, two ethnic groups. But still the yeah, Caucasian group is more like but there's no any statistically significant yeah, differences here. Yeah. All right, that concludes our presentation this morning, and uh, thank you, Dr. Khan. Uh, before I let you go, I want to uh, have a little announcement. Concordia University has a free monk program. As you know, uh, the study center is uh, from Art and Science, and then SIDS, uh, Southeast Asian Teacher Licensing Program, subject to uh, any school who wants to be a teacher uh, from the education of the and then the home culture related program which target for the kids K to 12, uh, also from uh, educational department. So uh, we are going to have our benefit concert on April 19th to uh, support our campaign of summer camp for the uh, home culture language program. So uh, make sure you check it out. As a token of our appreciation to Dr. John. Uh, <laughs> Um, we like to present this certificate to uh, Dr. John as a presenter in here and uh, 